Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 18th of March 2023. These are the articles which we are going to discuss today. Now without wasting much time, let us get into the first article for the day. Now let us take this article for our discussion. It says that the centre has selected 7 states for setting up textile parks under the PM Mitra scheme. The selected 7 states are Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. This is what is given in this news article displayed here. So in our discussion today, we will try to learn about the PM Mitra scheme in detail. See, PM Mitra stands for Prime Minister Mega Integrated Textile Region and Apparel. This scheme was announced in the month of October 2021. This PM Mitra scheme is inspired by the 5F vision of our Honourable Prime Minister. Here 5F refers to farm to fibre, to factory, to fashion, to foreign. The aim of this scheme is to position India on the global textiles map. This is to be done by establishing textile parks all around the country. This is what the article also reports about. Now let us see what are these textile parks. See, it is a big plot of land in which individual manufacturers can choose to build a textile unit of their own. If I am a t-shirt manufacturer, I can go and ask for a plot from the government. Let's say for example, I win the bid for plot D. Then I can go and build my unit in the allocated plot. Similarly, a weaver can get plot A. He gives me the necessary raw material. I, the t-shirt manufacturer, don't have to run around looking for raw material from elsewhere. Then there will be common facilities as well which all of us can use in the textile parks. This is how textile parks will bring in textile businesses from different parts of the country together. So we can say that PM Mitra parks or textile parks will offer an opportunity to create an integrated textile value chain. It would cover the entire value chain from spinning, weaving, processing, dyeing and printing to garment manufacturing all at one location. So this will help in reducing the logistics cost of the industry. Further, it will improve the competitiveness of Indian textiles in the world market. So by establishing textile parks all around the country, world class infrastructure for textile manufacturing will be created in India. This would further attract cutting edge technology from other countries through foreign direct investments and it will also increase the local investment in the textile sector. As reported by the newspaper article, the scheme envisages to construct 7 textile parks or Mitra parks. And these 7 Mitra parks will be set up at greenfield or brownfield sites. Under the scheme, the centre will provide development capital support. This is for the development of common infrastructure of rupees 500 crores for each greenfield Mitra park and up to rupees 200 crore for each brownfield park. Now what are these greenfield and brownfield projects? See in greenfield the investors start from scratch by obtaining land and building the plant on their own. While in brownfield they use an existing infrastructure either through purchase or through a merger with a local counterpart. This is why the money allocated to Greenfield Mitra Park is more than the money allocated to Brownfield Park. See, each Mitra Park will have an incubation center, common processing house and a common effluent treatment plant. It will also include other textile related facilities such as design centers and testing centers. Under this scheme, the state government need to provide 1000 acres for development of a world class industrial estate. Besides this, a competitive incentive support of rupees 300 crore will also be provided to each PM Mitra Park. This is for the early and quick establishment of textiles manufacturing units inside the PM Mitra Park. The support is crucial for a new project to help the units to scale up the production and establish its own viability. This is all about this article. Through this discussion, we came to know about the PM Mitra scheme and also about the textile parks which are going to be established as part of this scheme. With these learned points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. Now let us look at this news article taken from yesterday's newspaper. It reports about the death of two pilots who were killed in Arunachal Pradesh as their helicopter crashed. See recently there has been numerous incidents of helicopter crashes reported in India. This is due to the aging factor of helicopters used in the Indian Air Force. 
as reported in this article the helicopters which are used in indian air force like the cheetah and chetak are to be blamed for these incidents so in our discussion today we will try to learn about these helicopters firstly let's start with the chetak helicopter hindustan aeronautical limited which is an public sector company located in india started manufacturing these chetak helicopters in the year 1962 It did so by entering into an agreement with Airbus for the production of Alouette 3 helicopters also known as Chetak. The first Chetak in flyaway condition was delivered in the year 1965. See, Chetak is a 2-ton class helicopter. It is a 7-seater and it is versatile in its use. It is multi-role, multi-purpose and a spacious helicopter. It is powered by Autost 3B turbo shaft engine. See this engine was brought from an French helicopter engine maker talking about its uses the Chetak helicopter is suitable for commuting cargo or material transport casualty evacuation search and rescue operation aerial survey and patrolling till date Hindustan Aeronautical Limited has produced around 360 of these versatile helicopters in India and abroad now moving on to the Cheetah helicopter See the first Cheetah helicopter was delivered in the year 1976. The Cheetah helicopter is a high performance helicopter that is designed for operation over a very wide range of weight, center of gravity and altitude conditions. It is a five seater helicopter and like Cheetah it is also versatile multi role and multi purpose. It is highly maneuverable and is rugged in construction. But as compared to the Cheetah helicopters it has less bulkier body. Cheetahs are leaner than Chetaks. The Cheetahs also have fewer seating capacity and can land on the smallest of helipads. Know that the Cheetah helicopter holds the world record in high altitude flying among all categories of helicopters. The helicopter is also powered by Autost 3B turbo shaft engine like the Chetak. Then it is suitable for commuting, observation, surveillance, logistics support, rescue operations and high altitude missions. Due to its excellent power to weight ratio the Cheetah is one of the best suited helicopters for operation in the hot tropical weather and also for missions at high altitude the Cheetahs are also extensively used in the Himalayas where it is operated at altitudes beyond 20000 feet see it is the primary helicopter which is used by the Indian Air Force in the region of Siachen till date Hindustan Aeronautical Limited has produced and sold 279 of these versatile helicopters in India and abroad finally know that cheetah and chetak fleets are the backbone of IAF in search and rescue operations and casualty evacuation operations with this we have come to the end of this discussion through this discussion we have seen about two aging helicopters of India first we saw about chetak helicopters and next we saw about cheetah helicopters see there is also another type of helicopter called the cheetal helicopter Now your job is to search the internet and learn about these Cheetah helicopters. So that's all for this discussion. With these learned points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. Now take a look at this news article displayed here. It talks about the recent collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank. According to the article, our Minister of State for Electronics and Information Technology has mentioned that one billion dollars of Indian startups has been affected by the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank although this is a worrying news the minister of state stated that out of the 1 billion dollars nearly 200 million dollars have been moved to bank accounts present in India's gift city here gift city is a global financial and technology hub that is located in Gandhi Nagar Gujarat the minister also mentioned that steps must be taken to help the indian startups to move to the indian banking system rather than relying on the us banking system this is all about the news article given here in this context let us see the reasons for the collapse of silicon valley bank but before that let us start with the basics firstly what is a bond see bond is a financial instrument and to be specific it is a debt instrument It is a tool used by individuals, companies and governments to raise money or capital. Let us understand bonds using an example. Let's take an individual Mr. X. He is an aspiring entrepreneur coming from an humble background. He has a business idea which needs rupees 10 crores of investment, but he does not himself have that much money. So Mr. X approaches the bank. The banks ask for security which X does not have. 
so the banks does not loan Mr. X any money. Now Mr. X has two options. He can either use the debt route to raise money or equity route to raise money. In this discussion, we will only focus on the debt route. Mr. X issues 100 bonds each worth of 10 lakh rupees. So the cumulative amount of bonds will be equal to that of 10 crores. And he promises to pay the investors 20% interest every year. He also mentions that he will pay back the entire amount in 5 years. That is, Mr. X says that he will pay rupees 2 lakhs every year as interest and will repay the entire principal amount at the end of 5 years. Here, rupees 10 lakh is the face value of the bond. Time period is 5 years and the bond yield is 20%. Now, let me introduce you another character. His name is Y. Mr. Y has rich parents but he is lazy, stupid and unemployed. Mr. Y's father gives him 20 lakhs to start a business. As Mr. Y is lazy, he decides not to start a business. Instead, he decides to invest the 20 lakhs and live off from the interest amount received from it. At this specific time, Mr. Y sees Mr. X's advertisement. Since Mr. X offers 20 percentage interest, Mr. Y decides to invest his 20 lakhs by buying two bonds issued by Mr. X. He feels that the 20 lakhs will earn him 4 lakhs in interest every year and so he invests the entire amount in the bonds of Mr. X. Here note that bond issued by Mr. X pays interest only annually. But since Mr. Y invested his entire amount in the bonds of Mr. X, he does not have any money in his hand. Month end arrives and Mr. Y now has to pay the house rent for his Porsche apartment. Since he does not have money, he calls his dad and asks for some more money. But his dad does not give him any money since he has just gave him 20 lakhs. Now, Mr. Y does not have any other choice but to sell one of his bonds at the secondary market. Noticing the desperation of Mr. Y to sell one of his bonds, a shrewd investor, Mr. Z, offers to buy the bond from him but he says that he will pay only rupees 9 lakhs. Since Mr. Y needs money urgently, he agrees to the deal. Now, Mr. Z has bought the bond with face value of rupees 10 lakhs for rupees 9 lakhs. Even though he bought the bond for 9 lakhs, he will continue to receive the interest of rupees 2 lakhs per year from Mr. X. Now, what is the yield of the bond? Here, the yield jumps to 22.22 percentage instead of 20 percentage because of the lesser amount paid by Mr. Y to Mr. Z for buying the bond. Now, what can we infer from this scenario? When a bond's market price starts decreasing, its yield starts increasing. The reverse happens when the bond price increases. This is the relation between bond price and bond yield. Bond yield is inversely proportional to bond price. These are some basics about bonds. Like Mr. X, governments can also raise money in this way. In India, the government raises money like this by issuing government securities. Moving forward, let us see the relationship between central bank interest rate and bond prices. Let us assume that Mr. Y has bought a GSEC of face value rupees 1 lakh in the year 2018. The GSEC pays an interest of about 7 percentage which nearly comes to about 7000 rupees per year. The maturity period of the GSEC is 20 years. Fast forward 4 years. In the year 2022, India witnessed soaring inflation. To arrest inflation, RBI started raising the repo rate. Here note that RBI also does open market operations that is selling GSEX in the market to arrest inflation. To attract new investors, RBI fixes the interest rate on the newly issued GSEX at 9%. While this is happening, Mr. Y as usual has money problems and he is urgently in need of liquid cash. He decides to sell his GSEX in the secondary market. Say Mr. Z has some money and he wants to buy new bonds. He has the option of buying new GSEX issued which pays the interest rate of 9% or the old GSEX from Mr. Y which pays an interest of 7%. Obviously, Mr. Z will choose the new GSEX which pays more interest. But Mr. Y negotiates with Mr. Z and offers to sell his GSEC of face value rupees 1 lakh at a price of just 75,000. He convinces Mr. Z by saying that by paying rupees 75,000, you will continue to receive rupees 7,000 as interest every year. So the rate of return becomes 9.3%. Now Mr. Z is convinced 
and he buys the GSEC from Mr. Y at rupees 75,000 instead of investing in the new GSEC. In this scenario, Mr. Y is forced to sell at a loss mainly due to inflation and the associated interest rate hike by the RBI. What can we infer from this? When there is an interest rate hike by the central bank, the prices of old bonds and government securities will come down. Here also, the central bank interest rate and price of old bonds are inversely proportional. Having done with the basics, now let us take the case of Silicon Valley Bank. See, Silicon Valley Bank was founded in the year 1986. Before the collapse of the bank, it was the 16th largest US bank. This bank specialized in financing and banking for venture capital backed startup companies which are mostly technology companies. During the pandemic, technology companies earned a lot of profit. This is because due to lockdown, many companies were switching to online mode of working. The tech companies helped the other companies switch to online mode and made huge profits. So these companies deposited the excess profits with the Silicon Valley Bank. The Silicon Valley Bank has to pay interest for all these deposits, right? So they decided to invest the additional cash flow they received during the pandemic to invest in long-term US Treasury bonds. They failed to diversify their investment. Fast forward to 2022. Since the start of 2022, the tech sector in the US has been in a crisis. So the tech companies who had deposits in the Silicon Valley Bank started withdrawing their amount from the bank. Also note here that these tech companies are huge. So when they withdraw money, they will withdraw in millions of dollars. While this was happening on one side, the Russia-Ukraine war started. Due to this, oil prices started increasing in the global market. Due to the increase in global oil prices, US was facing huge scale inflation. To arrest the inflation, the US Federal Reserve, which is also the central bank of the US, started raising the interest rate. As we already saw, when there is an increase in interest rate by the central bank, the price of old bonds will start decreasing. As we just saw, Silicon Valley Bank invested heavily on the US Treasury bonds and the price of these bonds started declining. Since the customers were withdrawing their money at a faster rate, the Silicon Valley Bank had to sell their US Treasury bonds at huge losses to provide money for its withdrawing customers. On March 6th, the Silicon Valley Bank announced that it is planning to raise $1.7 billion by selling its US Treasury bonds. When this news first appeared, the share values of Silicon Valley Bank started falling at a fast pace. Let us assume there is a tech company named A, which has an account with Silicon Valley Bank. It has deposited huge sums of money in the bank. On the March 6, when the tech company A heard about the news that Silicon Valley Bank is selling its assets at a loss and at the same time the share value of Silicon Valley Bank is falling, naturally the company will be worried. The tech company A feared that the Silicon Valley Bank will go bankrupt soon and the company started pulling out its deposit from the Silicon Valley Bank. Like the tech company A, all the depositors of Silicon Valley Bank will start pulling out their deposits. This is the classic case of bank run. The whole event turned into a snowball effect and on 8th March 2023, the Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. Now, let us summarize what we just learnt. Why did the Silicon Valley Bank collapse? The first reason is the lack of diversification of assets by the Silicon Valley Bank. As I already said, most of the deposits which came into the bank during the pandemic period was invested by the bank in the US Treasury bonds. The second reason is the slowdown in the global growth. Because of this only, tech companies started withdrawing funds from the bank. The third reason is the Ukraine-Russia war and the associated inflation in the US and the rising of policy rate by the Fed. And the final reason is the panic among Silicon Valley Bank customers and the associated bank run. These are the reasons why Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. With this, we have come to the end of this discussion. Through this discussion, we have seen about the relationship between interest rate and bond price. We also saw about the relationship between bond price and bond yields. And finally, we saw the reasons for the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. With all these points in mind, now let's move on to the next article discussion. Now, let's take this article for our discussion. This article talks about horseshoe crabs. The crabs that outlived dinosaurs and survived five mass extinctions are now disappearing off the coast of Odisha. So, in this news article discussion, we will try to learn about these horseshoe crabs. See, horseshoe crabs are a marine chelicerate anthropod. Here, the subphylum chelicerata is a division within the phylum anthropoda. 
This subclass contains animals like spiders, scorpions, mites and ticks. Like all other anthropods, they have a segmented body and segmented limbs and a thick exoskeleton. Other than the marine horseshoe crabs, the Selicerata are found primarily in terrestrial environments worldwide. So, these horseshoe crabs are regarded as a marine living fossil. Here, the term living fossil refers to a species which has survived long periods of time on the surface of the earth. See, there has been numerous extinction cycles which has occurred on the earth. Because of these cycles, various species which have once inhabited the surface of the earth are not present till now. Only some species like the horseshoe crabs have escaped these mass extinctions and surviving till today. Animals or plants of these types are only called as living fossil. Now coming to the habitats of horseshoe crabs. See, they live in shallow coastal waters on soft, sandy or muddy bottom and spawns mostly on intertidal beaches at summer. The term spawn means the mass release or deposition of eggs by the fishes. Here note that horseshoe crabs generally inhabit the seabed area of the ocean. But for depositing or releasing their eggs, they come to the surface. Now coming to the different species of horseshoe crabs. The first one is the American horseshoe crab. They are found all along the eastern coast of the USA and in the Gulf of Mexico. Then the other types of horseshoe crabs include the trispine horseshoe crab, the coastal horseshoe crab, the mangrove horseshoe crab. These three are Indo-Pacific species found in the coastal waters of India, Southeast Asia, China and Japan. In India, horseshoe crabs are primarily found in the state of Odisha. Now let us see the biological significance of this species. Firstly, their ecological function of laying millions of eggs on beaches feed huge number of shore birds, fishes and other wildlife. This is the first importance. Secondly, their large hot shell serves as a microhabitat for many other species such as sponges, mud crabs and snails. Thirdly, they are a critical link to learn about world health and biodiversity. As I already said, these crabs outlived dinosaurs and survived five mass extinctions. This is due to the strong immune system present in the horseshoe crabs. The creature has lived on earth without undergoing any major morphological change meaning they have retained their immunity even today and this is how their blood provides a valuable medicinal product which can be used to test the safety of many pharmaceutical drugs here the valuable medicinal product is nothing but a protein in their blood called limulus amoebocyte lysate shortly known as lal this lal is used for the preparation of rapid diagnostic reagents by pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers to test their products for the presence of endotoxins here the term endotoxins are nothing but bacterial substances that can cause fever and even be fatal to humans so all injectable medicines are tested for endotoxins and screened before use this way horseshoe crab serves the function of providing a medium through which new pharmaceutical drugs are tested for the presence of endotoxins. With this we have come to the end of this discussion. Through this discussion we have seen about horseshoe crabs and also about its importance in the biological field. With all these points in mind now let's move on to the next article discussion. Now let us take this news article for our next discussion. It says that a tiger has helped in uncovering illegal timber depots deep inside a national park. The tiger was spotted outside the core area of the national park and the forest officials attempted to trace it and during that time only they were able to uncover these illegal timber depots. All these incidents happened inside the Namdapa National Park which is also a tiger reserve. So let us use this opportunity to learn about Namdapa National Park in prelims perspective. See, the Namdapa National Park lies along the international border between India and Myanmar in the Changlong district in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. It is the fourth largest national park located in India. And note that it is the easternmost national park of India. It was established as a national park in the year 1983 and it was declared as a tiger reserve in the same year. The vegetation here is characterized by tropical evergreen forest. The Dehing River, which is a tributary of the Brahmaputra, flows in a north-south direction through the middle of the national park. Now coming to the flora. See, there are more than 150 timber species present inside the national park. The Penis Mercusi and Abies Delavavi 
which are nothing but trees are not found anywhere in india except in this national park then one of the rarest and endangered orchids the blue vanda is also found here namdappa national park also has a famous local medicinal plant called mishimi tita it is used by local tribals for treating variety of diseases note that the export of this plant is prohibited by the indian government now talking about the fauna see it is the only park in the world to have the four feline species of big cat namely the tiger leopard snow leopard and clouded leopard see this is an important point so make note of it a number of primate species are also seen in the park such as assamese macaque pig tailed macaque and stem tailed macaque besides these hula gibbons which are highly endangered and the only ape species found in india dwells in this forest it is also famous for critically endangered species like the namdappa flying squirrel a species that was last spotted in the year 1981 other important animals present in the national park are elephants black bear indian bison several species of deer reptiles and a variety of arboreal animals among the bird species most notable is the white winged wood ducks it also has the population of great indian hornbills this is all with respect to this article through this discussion we came to know about the location of namdappa national park we also saw some points regarding its flora and fauna with all these points in mind now let's move on to the next article discussion have a look at this editorial article taken from yesterday's newspaper it talks about the yesterday attacks and the current challenges faced by the central reserve police force personnel it mentions about the pulwama and dantewada attacks which were carried out on the crpf personnel previously the author feels that even though the dantewada attack which took place in the year 2010 resulted in more casualties it is the pulwama attack which remains well known all across india here note that the date of pulwama attack which was carried out on 14th february 2019 is remembered every year all across india as pulwama remembrance day the author of this editorial was an inspector general of the central reserve police forces northeastern sector highlights three current issues faced by the crpf forces in india so in this news article discussion today let us see them one by one before that the syllabus relevant for this discussion is highlighted here interested aspirants can go through it Firstly let's begin with the question who are these central reserve police force see the central reserve police force is one of the premier central armed police forces of india which looks after the internal security they work under the ministry of home affairs originally they were constituted as the crown representative police in the year 1939 to assist british rulers in managing unrest and law and order issues so it is one of the oldest central paramilitary forces after independence the force was renamed as central reserve police force by an act of parliament on december 28 1949 the crpf is primarily responsible for maintaining internal security counter terrorism operations and assisting the state police in maintaining law and order it also assists in disaster management and protects vital installations all across india thereby they help to preserve national integrity and promote social harmony and development by upholding the supremacy of the constitution the forces played a significant role during the amalgamation of the princely states into the indian union when the princely states of junagadh and the small principality of kathiawar in gujarat declined to join the indian union crpf helped the union government in uniting these rebellious princely states with the union of india Displayed here are some of the duties performed by the CRPF. Pause the video and go through it. Now, talking about the issues faced by the CRPF forces as highlighted by the author. Know that CRPF personnel are made to fill in the vacancies created due to the de-induction of Indian Army from certain border areas. Because of this, personnel in the CRPF forces are tasked with performing the even more difficult task and made to overwork without any rest consequently training of the crpf personals also get compromised we all know that proper training reflects in the operational capability of any force if there is no proper training their operational capability will be very low this makes them vulnerable to attacks by anti national forces this is the first major problem faced by the crpf personals right now 
Secondly, the versatile and flexible operational procedures followed by the CRPF makes it simple for the central government to assign a good number of risky assignments to these forces. According to the author, the center does not have any option here. Because if they continuously deploy regular army over the Indian border areas, the center might attract negative attention from the international press. So here obviously the CRPF pays the price. But the issue is lack of proper training coupled with the overwork burden which affects the morale of the paramilitary personnel. This is the second issue highlighted by the author. Now coming to the third issue. Third issue is with respect to the pay and benefits that CRPF receives. See, currently CRPF personnel are excluded from the old pension scheme and they receive benefits only under the new pension scheme. The key difference between old pension scheme and the new pension scheme is that old pension scheme is lifelong post-retirement income contributed entirely by the government. But in the new pension scheme, the employee has to contribute certain percentage of his or her monthly income to his or her long-term post-retirement income. Only the remaining part will be funded by the government. Indian Army receives pension based on old pension scheme. But here, the CRPF are excluded from the old pension scheme citing that CRPF does not come under the term armed forces. But this particular issue has been recently rectified. The Delhi High Court on January 1st, 2023 said that Central Armed Police Forces are part of the Armed Forces of the Union Government. And it ruled that all employees of these paramilitary forces will be entitled to avail the benefits of old pension scheme which are made to apply to the Army, Navy and Air Force. So if a statement comes in the prelims stating that the term armed forces includes only Army, Navy and Air Force, then this statement is wrong. According to this recent Delhi High Court verdict, the term armed forces in India includes CAPF personnel also. With this, we have come to the end of this discussion. Through this discussion, we have seen about the problems faced by the CRPF personnel in India. Other than that, we also saw about recent Delhi High Court ruling which included CAPF personnel under the ambit of the word armed forces in India. With all these points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of our Hindu daily news analysis which is nothing but the prelims practice question discussion. Today, I have taken 5 different questions for our discussion. 4 will be discussed by me and 1 will be the quiz question for you. Now coming to the first question. This is a 3 statement question and all the statements given in this question are related to helicopters used by the Indian Air Force. The question asks us to find the incorrect statement. Now coming to the first statement. Lancer is an armed version of the Chetak helicopter. See this statement is incorrect. Lancer is an armed version of the Cheetah helicopter. So statement 1 is incorrect. Now coming to the second statement. Light utility helicopter is designed and developed as a replacement for the Cheetah and Chetak helicopters. See, this statement is correct. LUH is designed and developed as a replacement for both the aging Cheetah and Chetak helicopters. Statement 2 is correct. Coming to the third statement. Dhruv is the weaponized version of the advanced light helicopter Rudra. This statement is incorrect. The terms are interchanged here. Rudra is the weaponized version of the advanced light helicopter. So, statement 3 is also incorrect. The question is asking for the incorrect statement. So, the correct answer for this question is option C, 1 and 3 only. Now, moving on to the second question. This is a two statement question and the question is regarding the production and export of raw jute in India. The question asks us to find the correct statement. Coming to the first statement, India is the largest producer of raw jute. This statement is correct. India is the largest producer of raw jute. Now, moving to the second statement. India is the largest exporter of raw jute. See, this statement is incorrect. Even though India produces the largest amount of jute in the world, it uses most of it for its domestic consumption. So, it is not the largest exporter of raw jute. Our neighbor Bangladesh is the largest exporter. The question is asking for the correct statement. So, the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Now, coming to the third question. This question is regarding the term bank run. The question asks us to find the correct statement which correctly explains the term bank run. See bank run is nothing but a panic situation in which the depositors start withdrawing the money from their bank account. When this scenario happens, this is what is termed as bank run. So the correct answer for this question is option C. Now coming to the fourth and final question. Arrange the following national parks in the decreasing order of their area. Five different parks are given and we have to arrange the parks in decreasing order of their area. 
so we have to arrange them in an order in which the largest park comes first and the smallest park comes at the last here note that hemis national park is the largest national park in india the second largest national park in india is the desert national park the third is the gangotri national park the fourth as we saw in our discussion itself is the namdapa national park in the fifth place only kanchenjunga national park comes so the correct answer for this question is option b 1 3 2 4 and 5 the quiz question for you all is displayed here interested aspirants can post the correct answer in the comment section the mains practice question is displayed here interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of our discussion if you have liked our video please hit the like button do comment and share it with your friends thank you for listening